Good morning everyone. This is T. Dove. And I hope you must be enjoying my lectures that are already posted on YouTube. And continuing this series of lectures, we are going to discuss one of the most important, most difficult and uh, one of the most complicated poems of Standard 12. According to me, a roadside stand written by Robert Frost. But as usual, before we begin the discussion, let me tell you how this particular lecture has been organized. It has been organized under six, uh, uh, six headings. First of all, we will be briefly talking about this particular title, A Roadside Stand, how Robert Frost has used it, what it suggests, followed by a brief introduction about him, though you have been studying about him since your standard six, I think. Then, we will be knowing the central idea of this poem so that you can have you know uh, good understanding of this particular poem right from the start followed by line by line explanation so that if you are asked any question based on it you can easily answer it and then we will be discussing poetic devices followed by a short summary i think by the end of this uh, discussion you will have uh, complete understanding of this particular poem and that also effortlessly without any pain. So should we begin our discussion on this uh, title, A Roadside Stand. So in order to understand what it intends, what Robert Frost intends to convey to the readers through this title, you have to do one thing, you make, you make a mental picture of a small time farmer or a poor farmer who has made a stall, you can say a shade, small cottage on the side of a road and uh, spread his agricultural produce. You can say fruits or vegetables, mainly fruits. And he has set up his roadside stand far away from the city at the edge or at the corner of the road expecting that the city dwellers have a lot of money and he would be earning some money from them. But the important question that you should ask is, does the farmer succeed in his aim, in his ambition, in earning money from those city dwellers? So from this small discussion, you must have understood that this poem is going to talk about a deep divide between the urban ruler, urban area and rural area. So this is the central idea what Robert Frost intends to convey through this title. Hope you must have understood. Now moving on to a brief discussion about him. Though you must have studied about him, even then I have included some material so that you can write your answers properly. Look at the first paragraph silently then i read it for you and explain it for you have a look robert frost born in 1874 and died in the year 1963 was a highly acclaimed american poet known for his profound and evocative works that often explore rural life nature and the complexities of human existence Born in San Francisco, Frost spent his formative years, that means earlier years of life, in New England, which significantly influenced his poetry. He achieved widespread recognition and earned four Pulitzer Prizes for his collections, making him one of America's most celebrated poets of the 20th century. Now look at the second paragraph. Frost's poetry is characterized by its deep connection to the natural world. Remember, from standard 6 to standard 9, he will be talking about forest, he will be talking about crow, he will be talking about uh, fire and ice. And its exploration of universal themes, including the choices individuals make in life, the road not taken, remember. The consequences of those choices and the human struggle for meaning and identity. 
Response often feature rural settings. In case of a roadside stand, what we see, he has included rural setting and everyday scenes, making them accessible to a broad audience by addressing profound questions about existence. So this is speciality of Robert Frost. Look at the last paragraph. Some of his most famous works include the road not taken that I was mentioning and you must have studied in standard 9 which examines the idea of individual choices and their impact on one's life journey. And stopping by woods on a snowy evening known for its contemplative mood and exquisite imagery. Frost's ability to blend simplicity and complexity in his poetry has earned him a lasting place in the canon of English literature and his works continue to resonate with readers, scholars and admirers worldwide. So it is because of this quality that he can blend simplicity with complexity that Robert Frost is known for. So from this work also that means from a roadside stand also we are going to get this kind of theme only. The setting is rural. The theme is simple, but the message is larger. Fantastic work by this American poet. So this was something about Robert Frost. Let us know the central idea of this particular piece, a roadside stand. Hope you are understanding and this is one of the best contents that I am presenting. So if you feel, if you like it, do encourage me by writing your comments. Now, after we have understood what the title of this poem, A Roadside Stand, suggests and something about Robert Frost, it's time to understand the central idea of this particular work, A Roadside Stand. Look on the screen and let us understand this theme or central idea of this work. Let us read the first paragraph first. A roadside stand by Robert Frost explores the struggles of rural life, keep it in mind, and desire for economic relief in the face of economic hardship. The central idea of the poem revolves around the plight of a farmer or rural dweller who has set up a small roadside stand to sell goods, hoping for some financial support from passing travelers. So what are the keywords from this discussion? First of all, we have to understand that from line number one, the struggles of rural life. This roadside stand represents struggles of rural life and desire for economic relief in the face of economic hardship. Then the next keyword that you should keep in mind it talks about the plight of a farmer or a rural dweller. So it talks about the problems, plight, miseries, troubles of a rural dweller represented by a farmer who has set up a small roadside stand to sell goods. And what is his hope? Hoping for some financial support from passing travelers. So these are the three keywords that, that you should keep in mind. Next paragraph. The poem portrays a poignant picture. Poignant word means emotional, sentiment, sentimental, thought provoking. So the poem portrays a poignant picture of this humble roadside stand. Remember the word humble. This adjective must be used. Humble roadside stand which stands as a symbol of the economic challenges faced by rural communities. This phrase, this phrase should also be kept in your mind. This roadside stand is working as a symbol. So it has been used as a metaphor. Symbolizing the challenges faced by rural communities. The stand is described as pathetically pleading for money. Pathetically pleading for money. But also not as charity or a hand out but as a means of survival. What does it mean? We will come to know in the poem that this pathetically pleading means the farmer is desperate to earn money. 
but not as charity through his hard work by selling his produce so that he can manage his means of survival the narrator here narrator means poet robert first the narrator contemplates the passing traffic and the bustling city life contrasting it with the simplicity of rural landscape moving on to the next paragraph throughout the poem we will see from beginning to the end the poet's frustration is evident as he laments the intrusion of urbanization into the rural world so this phrase must be used by you in your answer so throughout like that, that means from beginning to the end of the poem we will see robert first is expressing his frustration his anger his irritation and laments the intrusion of urbanization into the rural world the city dwellers describe the place near the roadside stand as artless paint so on the other hand the city dwellers are describing that roadside stand the landscape or the area at that place as artless paint because they do not like it and the passing cars are seen as indifferent to the struggles of the rural population so here the passing cars have been personified and they have been treated as indifferent apathetic insensitive to the struggles of the farmer who has set up his roadside stand in hope of earning some cash from the city dwellers moving on to the next two paragraphs the central theme is the divide between rural and urban life and the economic disparities economic disparities means haves and have nots that exist between the two the city dwellers and the rural areas the poem on the scores the longing of rural communities for economic relief and the hope that urban prosperity might trickle down to them last line of this paragraph however it also suggests a sense of resignation and bitterness as poet contemplates the futility of farmers efforts and the lack of empathy from the city dwellers so despite farmers efforts to attract the city dwellers so that they can buy this produce robert frost does not see this happening and therefore he suggests a sense of resignation and bitterness and uselessness futility of farmers efforts that means he is making his efforts uselessly the city dwellers are not going to be uh, you know going to be sensitive their heart is not going to melt and they are not going to be empathetic last paragraph in the end the central idea revolves around the unfulfilled hopes unfulfilled hopes what is this hope the hope is to have some money from the city dwellers but this hope of getting money from the city dwellers does not materialize and the yearning for economic betterment yearning is desire for economic betterment in a rural setting sit against the backdrop of urban indifference and the challenges of maintaining a roadside stand the poem captures the complex emotions of those complex emotions of those living on fringes of society or you can say marginalized section seeking a lifeline to escape the economic struggles so finally when we are discussing the last paragraph of this central idea you can understand that this is a poem about the people who live on the fringes of society they are marginalized section they are we cannot say extremely poor but of course disadvantaged so in short you can say it's a struggle of the people living on the fringes or living on the margin of the society a kind of a struggle now hope you must have understood a lot from the central idea and uh, if you keep only the central idea in mind you cannot miss out any question from this poem 
and now it's time to understand this work line by line let's begin line by line explanation of a roadside stand now before i move ahead to give you the explanation of this form line by line i would like to ask you a simple question have you understood the central idea of this poem or not question number one and would you like to answer my second question as well can you present it in your own words you try listening is very important <laughs> okay now have a look on the first stanza let's begin its uh, explanation look at the first line the little old house was out with a little new shed in front at the edge of the road where the traffic sped a roadside stand that too pathetically pled it would not be fair to say for a dole of bread but for some of the money the cash whose flow supports the flower of cities from sinking and withering faint beautiful number one rhyming and uh, i do not think you have understood what this stanza tries to convey and if you have understood i'm sorry for underestimating you hope it can go either way but now look at the ex explanation part what it says so here you have the line by line explanation i have written it so that uh, usually what happens if i deliver a lecture and do not give you the writer then it takes a lot of time for you to write down and i have written it here so that you can use it in your speaking in your writing so the poem begins with a description of a small old house and a newly built shed look at the first line once again you keep your book with you also located at the edge of or side of the road have a look at the first line once again the little old house was out with a little new shed so the line begins the poem begins with a description of a small old house the little old house was out with a little new shed and a newly built shed where is it located look at line number 2 at in front at the edge of the road so it is located at the edge or side of the road then where the traffic sped means it is a place from where cars traffic travel by now line number 3 a road side stand that to pathetically played what does it mean line number 3 what does pathetically played mean it serves as a road side stand and the phrase pathetically played means or suggest that it seems needy or desperate needy or desperate for what for money but next line it would not be fair to say for a dole of bread for a dole of bread here a dole of bread means for donation for charity the farmer does not need money in charity or in donation so look at the next line here the poet implies that the people at the roadside stand are not seeking charity but are hoping for a share of money but for some of the money the cash the last part of the last la uh, second last line and the last the flow the cash the cash whose flow supports here cash prosperity the flower of cities from sinking and withering faint look at the last line explanation so the flower of cities symbolizes the thriving and flourishing aspects of urban life and the people at the roadside stand want to partake in this prosperity that could deteriorate that means sink or with the faint 
without it means if there is no money in city if there is no money in delhi there is no money in mumbai there is no money in bangalore so these cities i am giving you an example from indian context these cities will not be uh, will not be called city and the flower of these cities the prosperity the economic muscle will wither or faint and they will become same as rural area now moving hope you have understood it each and everything moving on to the second stanza the polished traffic passed with a mind ahead or if ever aside a moment then out of sorts at having the landscape marred with the artless paint of signs of signs that with end turned wrong and s turned wrong offered for sale wild berries in wooden cords or crook necked golden squash with silver warts a beauty rest in a beautiful mountain scene you have the money but if you want to be mean why keep your money this crossly and go along what does it mean the traffic on the road side is described as polished what does it suggest it suggests people driving the cars are rich and prosperous the phrase with a mind ahead indicates that they are focused on their destination and are not paying much attention to the surroundings occasionally occasionally if someone glances aside at the roadside stand he is being described out of sorts meaning he is irritated annoyed the landscape at the roadside stand is described as artless meaning they lack sophistication or artistic merit in the city dwellers eyes the signs are described as having end turned wrong and s turned wrong which suggests that they are poorly structured or not properly aligned the farmers products such as such as white berries crook necked golden squash are described in a way that emphasizes their rustic and unrefined nature so the farmers produce have also been criticized this also shows poor quality of produce for the city dwellers the phrase why keep your money this costly what does it mean it means that the people are being stingy what does the word stingy means miser economical not spending money or ungenerous look at the last two lines and the word crossly suggests irritation on the part of the poet or the people at the roadside stand let me explain the last line so when he says why keep money this crossly that means low sided urban areas have lot of money but the same money is lacking in the rural areas so this is keeping money this crossly unbalanced unequitable development of the two areas moving on to the this is actually this stanza is critical analysis of the above stanza let me read it out the stanza ends with a somewhat sarcastic and resentful resentful tone so there is sarcasm why keep money this crossly so there is a sarcasm by the poet it suggests that the passing drivers have the money to make a purchase but they choose not to do but they choose not to do possibly because they consider the offerings to be of low quality or beneath their standard so it conveys a sense of disconnect between the between the the urban and prosperous travelers and the rural or struggling farmers inhabitants of the roadside stand last line is very very important for you so hope you must be understanding look at stanza number 3 the hurt to the scenery wouldn't be my complaint so much as the trusting sorrow of what is unsaid 
Here, far from the city, we make our roadside stand and ask for some city money to fill in hand to try it, to try if it will not make our wing expand and give us the life of the moving pictures promise that the party in power is said to be keeping from us. What does this stanza mean? It means the speaker acknowledges, that means the poet acknowledges, accepts that the presence of the roadside stand may disrupt the beauty of the natural scenery wherever the farmer has put up or put up his shed, you can say. So that particular area may not look very artistic or very fascinating. Okay, acceptable. But that's not the poet's primary concern. Instead, he is more troubled by the unspoken sadness or sense of trust that is left unexpressed by the people running the stand. This line is very important. The people have located their stand far from the city in a rural or uh, less affluent area. They have set up their stand in the hope of receiving money from the urban travelers passing by. The money is essential for them to meet their needs. The people at the roadside stand are hoping that the money they receive will improve their lives and provide them with the opportunities and comforts they have seen depicted in the movies or moving pictures. Last line is very very important. They believe that this money will allow them to expand their existence and fulfill the promises of a better life that they have seen in popular culture. It likely refers to the ruling political party or government. The people at the roadside stand feel that the government is withholding the benefits and opportunities they believe they deserve. They see the promise of a better life but the feel it is being kept from them leading to a sense of frustration and hopelessness. Finally, critical analysis of this stanza. Look at the last three lines. These lines highlight the aspirations and struggles of the people at the roadside stand. They are seeking financial support from passing urban travelers, hoping that it will provide them with a taste of the prosperity and opportunities they perceive in the city. So, this stanza shows that these people, means rural people, feel disappointed because whatever they have been promised, the promise is not kept by the government. Moving on to the next stanza, number four. It is in the news that all these pitiful kin, referring to the people standing at the roadside stand. So it is in the news that all these pitiful kin are to be bought out and merciful gathered in to live in villages next to the theater and the store where they won't have to think for themselves anymore. Now, there is articles, news in newspapers. There is also news running on television channels. What is that? That these people, these poor people would be bought out. Look at the explanation part. So the news reports that the individuals associated with the roadside stand described as pitiful king are going to be offered compensation or buyout. They will be gathered together and relocated to live in villages. This suggests a government will address their situation, but keep in mind here. So it shows that the government has finally woke up and it is going to address their problems. But what happens? The plan is to relocate these people to villages which are likely more organized and connected to modern amenities like theaters and stores. The implication is that they will no longer need to faint for themselves means these people will not have to struggle for their food and make difficult decisions because their basic needs will be provided for. Means now because the government is going to take initiative to address their problems, to compensate for their uh, 
life and whatever requirements they have the government is going to fulfill all these but there is a devilish intention before this redressal of the problem what is that look at the next stanza it will give you so here this stanza is a very very sarcastic attack on those in authorities or you can say on government what does the poet say why greedy good doers beneficent beasts of prey swarm over their lives and enforcing benefits that are calculated to soothe them out of their wits and by teaching them how to sleep the sleep all day destroy their sleeping at night the ancient train so these pitiful king are now relocated to a place in villages where they can enjoy better amenities but as i told you there are evil intentions before this relocation these people have been described as greedy good doers means people with wrong intention they want to make use of them look at the explanation part the poet calls all those who are initiating this relocation as greedy good doers and beneficent beasts of prey this implies this means that while they may appear charitable on the surface they may appear a people of good intention on surface but they are taking advantage of the situation they are imposing supposed benefits on the people at the roadside stand benefits that are designed to pacify or placate them even if it means taking away their independence or control over their lives so by relocating them these people are taking control of their life they are holding them now in their fist the good doers are also trying to alter the habits and routines of the people they are now making them dependent on them by teaching them to sleep during the day which might be considered more efficient or convenient to make them dependent on others so now they make dependent on themselves so that they can make use of them so that when they can exploit them at their will they disrupt the villagers long standing practice of living so i have already explained even then you look at so these lines depict a complex situation where external forces represented by the greedy good doers are intervening in the lives of the people at the roadside stand the poem suggests a certain degree of disregard for the traditions and self reliance of the people being relocated it raises questions about the impact of such interventions on individuals and communities and whether they truly lead to better lives or merely serve the interests of those in power moving on to the next stanza here we are now here poet gets involved in their feelings personally and what he says sometimes i feel myself i can hardly bear the thought of so much childish longing in vain the sadness that lurks near the open window there that waits all day in almost open prayer for the squeal of brakes the sound of a stopping car so here what he does he says in this stanza robert frost continues to express his frustration and longing he describes the emotional burden he feels due to unfulfilled hopes and desires associated with the roadside stand he acknowledges his difficulty in coping with the persistent seemingly futile longing he experiences this longing longing means desire is described as childish suggesting that it is an innocent and simple desire for something better there is a pervasive sadness associated with the roadside stand it is as if this sadness constantly present waiting by the open window almost as if it is praying for something to alleviate it the people at the roadside stand are desperately hoping for a car to stop symbolized by the squeal of brakes showing interest 
in the products and prices so here the poet intervenes and says that he has emotional burden to feel why does he feel emotional because the farmers desire hopes of getting money from the city dwellers remain unfulfilled and these he calls farmers childish longing his desire will never be fulfilled so this is the main thing once and twice you read it will be clear moving on to the next stanza stanza number seven here we are hmm. of all the thousand selfish cars personification i will discuss all the poetic devices after that so of all the thousand selfish cars that pass just want to inquire what a farmer's prices are and one did stop but only to plow up grass in using the yard to back and turn around and another to ask the way to where it was bound and another to ask could they sell it a gallon of gas they couldn't this crossly they hadn't none didn't it see so thousands and thousands of cars swiftly pass through through that stand the stanza describes a series of disappointing interactions with passing cars of thousands of cars that swiftly travel by through the farmer's roadside stand farmer's roadside stand hardly any one of them makes a halt there if ever one stops one car stops but it's only to turn around and disturb the yard means to use a car to use the area for turning the car another asks for directions and yet another inquires about buying gas but nobody is talking about his produce but is meant with a cross response irritation that they don't have any gas this stanza continues to emphasize the frustration and despair of the people at the roadside stand so finally the farmer does not succeed in making money now look at stanza number eight no in country money the country scale of gain the requisite lift of spirit has never been found or so the voice of the country seems to complain so what these three lines mean in this stanza the poet reflects things on the economic struggles and the longing for relief experienced by the people at the roadside stand this stanza also reveals that speakers shifting emotions and thoughts the poet suggests that in the rural or countryside economy the kind of financial success or prosperity needed to lift the spirits of people at the roadside stand has been elusive despite their efforts they have not found the economic relief they seek he perceives a collective sentiment among the rural population that echoes this sense of dissatisfaction and longing for better economic opportunities in simple language let me put it so far as this stanza is concerned it summarizes in this thought that so far as development work in villages in rural area is concerned it has not been adequate and it is because of less development work in villages or rural area people of this area rural area feels frustration feels dissatisfaction or you can say complain now moving on to the last stanza of this poem it can't help only i can't help owning the great relief it would be to put these people at one stroke out of their pain and then next day as i come back into the scene i wonder how i should like you to come to me and offer to put me gently out of my pain what does it mean so here he says after so much frustration unful promise unfulfilled promises of the peasants the farmers says there is only one solution i can't help owning the great relief it will be 
So if you cannot give them economic relief, if you cannot bring development in this area, then there is only one solution and that solution is put all these people to end. You know, you can say he suggests these people should, I think, maybe the, this, these lines have different explanations, different interpretations. So they should be either economically compensated or in a way they should commit suicide. These people should commit suicide, kill themselves in one go. But later on he says when he comes to senses, then he says no, that is not a good idea. The better idea will be you get rid of me, you kill me in place of them. So this is a very heartening explanation and as I told you, it has a number of different explanations. You will find different explanations given on different websites, but this is what it suggests. So in this stanza, Robert first vents his, ang his deepest anger. He contemplates the idea of helping these struggling farmers, these struggling farmers in a significant and effective manner or perhaps by alleviating their financial difficulties or perhaps hinting at their mass suicide. This is what I have found. However, his mood shifts the next day when he regains his rationality and recognizes the complexity of the situation, he offers himself to be relieved of his own suffering in a similar way. That means by killing. This, reflect, this reflection highlights the moral and ethical dilemmas as well as his empathy for the farmers. So these stanza shows Robert Frost's empathy, his concern, his worry for the rural farmers. I hope you must have understood the central idea, the line by line explanation and if anything is left that you need to understand revise that part of the lecture and you will understand on it on your own and then it is time to move on to the discussion of the poetic devices that have been used in this particular piece so let us move on to that part so this is the pdf of your poem let us discuss the poetic devices that have been used by robert frost in this poem Look at the first line first, you know. The little old house was out with a little in shed. So can you see any poetic device being used here? The word little has been repeated. So here I have written a repetition, little, little. So this literary device, poetic device is repetition. Then we have uh, next line, this one. A roadside stand, uh, a roadside stand that to pathetically played. So this uh, pa sound, pa pa, is alliteration. Alliteration is a poetic device in which a consonant sound is repeated at the beginning of two uh, consecutive words or closely connected words. You can say. Plus, the same pathetically played is a metaphor also. It is an example of metaphor also. How? Pleading has been described as pathetic. I have written it all. Pleading has been described as pathetic. So it shows an example of metaphor also. Now moving on to this part. Polished traffic with mind ahead. So here it is polished traffic with mind ahead. So polished traffic with mind ahead is personification. How it is personification? Because this polished traffic has a mind. So it has been personified. Next poetic device is this flower of cities. Flower of cities metaphor. So here you see the flower of cities, the flower of cities from sinking and withering faint. So here, the flower of cities. Now look at these two lines. Or crook-necked golden scratch with silver warts. 
or beauty rest in a beautiful mountain scene. So here what is happening, this word or is beginning the two lines. So when a word starts or begins two consecutive lines, this repetition of a word at the beginning of two sentences or two lines is called anaphora. So here or or is an example of anaphora. Let us move ahead. Look at this line. So much as a trusting sorrow of what is unsaid. So here trusting sorrow is described as if it possesses the human quality of trust. Trusting sorrow. So this is an example of personification. Here sorrow has been personified. Moving on to the next literary device, poetic device. So here and give us the life of the moving picture promise. So here pa and here pa. The sound pa has been repeated at the beginning of these two words. Therefore it is an example of alliteration. Moving on to the next line. It is in the news that all is pitiful king. So here pitiful king actually refers to the relatives of family or relative or family members of the farmer. So there is comparison between pitiful king and uh, relatives or the far including farmer. So it is an example of metaphor. And here we have greedy good doers. Gaga sound gaga. So why greedy good doers beneficent beasts of prey? So here ga ga sound has been repeated. It is an example of alteration. And then we have baba. So ba beneficent beasts. It is an example of alliteration. And again here you have uh, another poetic device used in this line. Slip, slip, a repetition is there. Where is that word? Yeah. And by teaching them how to sleep, they sleep all day. So sleep, sleep has been repeated. So it is an example of repetition. Moving ahead to next lines. So here we go. This line. In this sadness is personified as if it is human quality of so I have already discussed that here is squeal of uh, squeal of bricks there is some let me find out where that uh, line is there is some line here yeah for the squeal of bricks the sound of a stopping car so here squeal is producing sound. It imitates the screeching or high pitched noise often associated with sound of brakes on a stopping car. So whenever sound word is used, this is onomatopoeia. So this is example of onomatopoeia. Now we are talking about selfish cars. This selfish cars. So here car has been given, cars have been given human quality. So it is an example of personification. Moving on to the next, uh, in country, put these people, yeah, put these people. So there is that, put these people, where is that? No, in country money, the country scale of gain, the requisite lift of spirit has never been found, or so the voice of the country seems to complain. I can't help owning the great relief it would be to put these people pa pa. So this is again an example of alliteration. Pa pa sound. There is one word between put and people. So it will be called closely connected words. So these are some of the important poetic devices that have been used by Robert Frost in this particular poem, A Roadside Stand. And now finally it's time to have the summary of this particular piece so that our today's discussion becomes complete. So let us move on to the summary of this poem. Now after I have already completed discussion of four headings, the title, then about the poet, then about the central idea, you can say the theme and uh, 
line by line explanation of the poem then finally just before this discussion i have completed poetic devices or you can say discussion of the poetic devices so it is important for me to ask you a question do you need summary of this poem and that also explained by me i don't think you need but i will give you i'm that big hearted i'm generous i'm a generous teacher very kind and even if you do not demand i will give you okay so moving ahead let's have a quick summary of this poem hope you must have understood by now and if you have understood please 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 let me know that you have understood and my lectures are helping you a lot look at the first uh paragraph of this particular summary a roadside stand by robert frost is a poem that paints a vivid picture of a humble roadside stand a humble roadside stand we have already seen on the edge of a road where traffic rushes by this is just a repetition the stand is described as a little old house with a little new shed and is run by people who are seeking to make a living by selling their produce and goods to passing travelers hope it is not creating any trouble or difficulty for you in understanding the poem highlights the challenges faced by these rural folks as they try to eke out a living this phrase is very important very good eke out a living that means manage to earn their living decent living in a world driven by urbanization and modernity so i would advise you to write down this phrase they try to eke out a living in a world driven by urbanization and modernity if you use such kind of phrases in your answer your answer will stand out the speaker notes that the passing traffic representing the fast paced city life this phrase is also very good representing the fast paced city life often overlooks the stand and its offerings the stand sells items like wild berries and a squash and its owners hope to receive money from city dwellers passing by moving on to the next throughout the poem there is a sense of frustration and disappointment as the stand's owners stand's owner hope owners hope for a better life but find themselves ignored or taken advantage of by the passing cars the poem touches on the theme of economic struggle the longing for a better life and the disconnect between rural and urban worlds this line must be memorized by you the poem touches on the theme on economic struggle the longing for longing means desire desire for a better life and the disconnect between rural and urban worlds so it shows a disconnect between the city and villages in the end the poem reflects on idea that these rural individuals roadside stand people might one day be offered a way out of their hardships by being bought out and relocated to more urban settings where they won't have to think for themselves anymore the poem concludes with a somewhat disturbing thought that it would be a great relief to put these people out of their pain but the speaker ultimately questions the morality of such a proposition proposition means idea suggestion plan that all these people at roadside stand representing the entire farmer community or you can say peasant community should be relieved of their pain by either by they can do it by committing mass or mass suicide so this is a very disturbing proposition overall a roadside stand is a poignant exploration of rural life economic disparity and the clash between traditional ways of living and the forces of progress and urbanization so frustration is bound to happen because it creates a divide between the haves and have-nots between the rich and the poor between the urban and the rural between the prosperity and poverty and this is what the main idea that robert frost 
has tried to convey through this poem a road side stand and I do believe that you must have understood each and every word of this poem and you may not have any difficulty. If you feel any difficulty in understanding any line, I would suggest you to go to that part of the lecture, pause it, watch it and then you can answer any question based on this lecture. Hope you must have enjoyed my explanation.